Hello and welcome to the DSP Leaders World Forum 2021. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. And coming up now is our Challenges and Opportunities Roundtable, where we'll be discussing digital services for decarbonisation. Now, if the world wants to stabilise climate change and meet the UN's target of holding average temperatures to one and a half degrees above pre-industrial levels, then we're going to have to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions by 50% before the end of this decade and reach net zero before 2050. Tall order. But can digitalisation help? Reports suggest that it has the potential to reduce global emissions by up to what, 10, 15% by 2030. So an ideal opportunity for telcos to take the lead then. Well, we'll see. Joining me for our round table today are Hema Esteban Garrido, who is global head of ESG at IG4 Capital. Jane Rygaard, who is head of dedicated wireless networks and edge clouds at Nokia. And Adam Beaumont, who is CEO of AQL, trustee of the Eden Project and a board member of UK 5G. Hello everyone, good to see you all. I'm looking forward to this discussion because we've got such a wide range of experiences between us all. Hema, until very recently you were a director at Telefonica and were closely involved with sustainability at board level and its relationship to CSR goals, as well as being a regular guest of us on Telecom TV of course. Now you work at an ESG focused private equity firm. And Jane, you probably have more knowledge and insight into all aspects of Nokia than anyone else I know. And I think the last time we spoke, we were looking at smart factories in Sweden and Finland. And Adam, welcome. First time on Telecom TV. You bring the perspective of a UK-based telco, one that specialises in, amongst other things, interconnect and wholesale, and has a keen focus on innovation and enabling sustainable smart cities, plus, of course, your 5G UK connections. Well, with that said, let's press on. We've put together some discussion points based on input from our Telecom TV viewers. So first point is on technology and decarbonisation. One of the original objectives of 5G, which is often overlooked now, was for lower energy use. So is 5G an enemy or friend of sustainability? Can it help telcos reduce their own carbon footprint through energy efficiency? Jane, what do you think? I think um, I think first, if we look at, at 5G overall and compare it with previous technologies that we have, like LTE or, or even before that, we actually just saw um, end of last year in a study with Telefonica that uh, per bit, so basically how much we transport within, per bit we are, we are up to 90% better with 5G when it comes to energy consumption. And, and this means in this world, now you said digitalization earlier, if we assume we're going to use more data to also make sustainable choices, we also need to make sure that the data, data we then spend is not done um, you know, by using too much energy. So in this case, 5G is delivering on the, on the first part. Of course, we need to see more rollout and we need to be able to see that we also move the traffic onto these right solutions. But I would say first off, of uh, the very early experience that we've had the last couple of years in Europe for Nokia definitely shows that we are better off with 5G and is living up to the promises that we said earlier in the initial days of, of reduction of energy consumption for, per bit, right? Because I have to say that our data overall is growing fantastically in mobile networks just last year and how we all now work from home, right? We have, we've seen uh, data through the roof um, in terms of growth. So of course it has an impact as well, but at least five years of technology is a better sustainable choice than the previous mobile technologies we've had. Thanks, Jane. And absolutely, we'll add that uh, per bit clarifier there. Hema. I think that the, the answer um, is, for me, is to have a holistic approach of network deployment. Uh, 5G is, as Jane has commented, 90% uh, um, less energy uh, consumption than other uh, technologies. Has been, this has been proved. Um, but you need to take into account how you are deploying your network, how you are getting rid of your old equipment, how you are using power saving features on your network so that you are greener. So there is a whole um, strategy, I would say, on efficiency, which is behind uh, the, the, the topic. No? It's not only if 5G is more energy efficiency than 4G or 3G, right? So the right um, answer is yes, absolutely. 
we need to be all um, carbon neutral by 20 at least by 2050 we are uh, think with the whole industry or the biggest operators are announcing to be carbon neutral before that and absolutely this there is a way to to go uh, through that and to reach the uh, goals that are set by the un for for all the companies and all the countries thanks and, and adam uh, friend or foe 5g Obviously, the, the the points about energy consumption per per megabyte or per gigabyte transferred, five uh, G is more efficient. Um, but as an industry, I think that um, telecoms is often hidden behind uh, the fact that video conferencing is maybe more efficient than uh, global travel. Um, but that should not really let us off the hook. Um, we're still here talking about, when we talk about net neutral, uh, by whichever target year it may be, uh, net neutral is, is really a, a statement to say that we are still not the right side of the line. So we're still talking about how we can be less bad uh, rather than more good. And telecoms um, uses somewhere between five and 10% of the earth's energy, the world's energy. Um, so that's a lot to go at. Um, I think there's also there's also some some hidden um, energy costs here that we're perhaps not looking at, and I think that the the point about holistic um, network is is really important. Um, as we as we turn the taps on faster and and deliver more data to the end users, um, we're we're also um, providing more content to them, richer content, and we have to look at the cost streaming that content and delivering that content, which is huge. Uh, we either keep it centrally uh, and then transport the data a long way, or we move some of that content towards the edge where perhaps um, the opportunity to use renewable power is diminished, um, the, the opportunity to share some of that cooling uh, of, the, of, any, of any heat generated is also diminished. So there's, there's a whole holistic rethink as to how we do telecoms. Thank you, Adam. And, and Jane, do you want to come back on uh, Adam and Hema's points there? I, I, I really, um, I think that's spot on because this thing about do, how far do we need to move away the data to make sense of it. So exactly the network architecture on uh, on edge, what do, what data do we keep where? But then also to the point from Adam that's saying, can we reuse what we're doing? So in, in Nokia, um, actually within Europe, right? So when we, when we say we power the 5G of Europe, we're also looking at things like liquid cooling. So can we take liquid cooling and reuse the heat from, for instance, space stations in a mobile network and reuse that energy? Because it's, act, it, it's, it's warm enough in the outgoing power or the outgoing heat that we can, uh, we can use it to heat up household warm water. So the, the threshold is, is right for this. And I think, yes, we need to think much more holistic and sustainable in, in the whole part, not just what do we consume, but then how can we make it a handprint instead of a footprint in the overall uh, communications part. Thank you, Adam. I, I, yeah, I think I think you know what we're hitting on here is 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 something that really fundamentally hits on on global policy around around telecoms. Um, so just to share some of my own experiences uh, as a, as an operator, uh, we have a national network. Uh, we have data centres. Uh, many of those data centres are in city locations, and many of those data centres use megawatts of power uh, a lot of that is is powering the content platforms that deliver uh, everything that the the mobile subscriber wants um, one of the challenges here for example um, the fuel poverty in and around my city of leeds uh, is in double digits uh, and we have as a as data center telecoms operators we have megawatts of waste heat that we want to give away and there's a mass, there's a massive piece missing here in terms of city planning and how um, cities and national policy should insist that waste heat isn't wasted and, and it's plowed back into other schemes by way of, for example, in the UK, we have a 106 planning law or 106 planning requirement, which is if we grant you planning permission, um, you must um, make the most efficient use of your surroundings and, and to give back as much as you can. Or and or take waste heat. I think there's there's 
there's a real high level policy piece as to how we make this more good rather than less bad. But we should uh, move on. We need to also look at the role of telcos as enablers for other industries. Um, what do we think about 5G enabled digital services? Will, will they allow CSPs to help industries, economies and society become more sustainable? Khema, perhaps I could address that to you first. Sure. Well, I think that um, there is one part which is our own decarbonization path and our own uh, road to, to net zero and to be green. But the most important thing is precisely what you have mentioned, the power and the, the ability to uh, decarbonize other industries. That is absolutely, I think, uh, pushed and driven by 5G, because 5G um, is going to allow to implement much more number of uh, digital services, such as IoT, such as uh, cloud, such as uh, big data, such as security, uh, things that are uh, purely um, helping other industries, many, many sectors, such as um, electricity, such as water, such as, you know, many, many different, from many, many different angles. Um, to use these uh, technologies to decarbonize themselves. For example, in Telefonica yeah, last year, we uh, were able to decarbonize three times our own carbon emissions. This is huge. And this is the power that we as an industry and as a big companies ha have. And I think that we need to push that a lot. And Adam has mentioned this, for example, um, the, um, the ability to communicate and to avoid, uh, for example, traveling, which has been huge and the impact of the pandemic has been huge on that, is, is uh, really important. No? And the way in which digitalization has leapfrogged like uh, four or five years uh, forward because of this crisis has proof that uh, I think that this is a real um, good path, path for the industry, um, in fact, no? Thanks, Hema. Jane, as Hema just said there, you know, we, we are seeing reports that this past year we've, we've seen a, a dramatic increase in the, in the pace of digitalisation by industry. So we've been advocating the use of, of telecoms technologies and services to help, to help enterprises and vertical sectors for years now. But are we now in a state where we can realistically help industries and economies become more sustainable? I, th I think, I think unlike, you know, I would say six years ago or, or whenever we started using talking about using LTE for these type of things, the ecosystem is now there, and I definitely see. So, like you said last time we met face to face, we spoke about uh, digitalization in factories, and and of course the very first initial part is that people often talk about what is the efficiency or what is the productivity gain, but with that also comes a better utilization of energy and a more end-to-end uh, -end thinking when it comes to sustainability. And we definitely see now, as I said, the ecosystems are there. We see the uptake um, from, a, from a Nokia perspective. We have over 260 uh, what I would call dedicated wireless networks, so where networks are being used for something that is not nationwide consumer-orientated networks. And that includes manufacturing, includes utilities, it includes uh, ports. All of it is uptaking now, and I would say even based on the last year's learnings on, on uh, how quickly do we need to be agile and change in, in our productions uh, because of, of pandemics, well, this is going even faster than I would have dreamt about a year ago. So I think if you look at the growth that's happening now, and we definitely see a turning point also on these industrial IoT cases where communication networks plays a role and where uh, the mobile technology plays a role in, in order to get as optimal as possible, which in the end, for me, is not only these days about productivity, but as I said, about the overall sustainability, because each company also has sustainability targets, and, and specifically in Europe, right, this is uh, something we see as a goal through nearly all the companies uh, that we work with, that there is a sustainability target also in their own production and their own uh, business itself. Adam. Um I know you're involved in the UK in several trials at the moment, 5G related trials. Does, does sustainability and decarbonisation play a, a, a leading role in, the, in these trials? Uh, it does. It's, it's, it's one of the, the key KPIs that we 
are looking to deliver on uh, with, with all of these projects. I think that um, just back to the sort of the earlier question, which leads into this, um, what we're looking for is, is, is using 5G to impact in the, in the, the most effective way possible. And generally, uh, the impact of technology is usually um, a singularity event. So it's usually the convergence of two or more uh, exponentially accelerating technologies to complement each other. So just to give you an example, um, driverless cars um, is is a is an AI based technology uh, allowing um, the uh, the navigation of, of cars in and around cities um, and between cities uh, without without human input. Um, however, those cars will literally sit in autonomous traffic jams uh, unless you can bring and converge another type of technology into the mix. And, and here we're talking about the, the low latency capabilities, which is a fundamental change in the architecture of mobile networks to allow local data routing. So 5G isn't just about faster, it's about a whole fundamental underlying um, number of layers which allow millisecond routing of local traffic between local parties. So you will no longer have um, uh, just, an, just autonomy within cities, but you'll also have um, synchronization uh, and increased efficiencies through being able to um, modify the flow control of, of transport, logistics, private vehicles uh, to interface with rail, um, to interface with robot deliveries, uh, and to make all this work uh, without um, any one technology getting in the way of another or any, or any one vehicle getting in the way of, the, of another. And I think it is, it's that convergence of multiple technology strands. So it's not that 5G is the magic bullet, um, but some of the, the well thought out um, complete replacements of, of, the, of the data stack that backs up what is a 5G um, radio delivery uh, is a real key step change enabler to making sure that we can build properly smart cities. Hema, when uh, your experience at Telefonica, um, Telefonica is one of the world's leading operators. Um, now, it's, it's not the case that all operators are tier one operators. Um, telcos are, are trying to make this change from CSPs to DSPs, looking and pushing digital services, but many of them are still years away from proper digital services deployments. So is it a bit premature for them to pursue carbon zero strategies at this stage and, and look at how they can enable other verticals and, and other enterprises. Is there, is there any rationale or is it practical value for all telcos to, to have this on their agenda? Absolutely. Well, I, I believe that. I believe that technology is in place to embrace this. Um, I think there is a must uh, reason, which is the big push from the investment world um, in, in, in Europe, for example, from the, the European Union and the European Green Deal. So there is a big push to, to move toward digitalization, whether it means your own digitalization as a company, as being more, in a way, softwareized, as, as networks are, are being and are being transformed, but also to embrace and to, to push the digitalization of the country where you live, the customers where, uh, that you have. Um, and and that, is, that is something that um, all, I think that all telcos are embracing. Maybe uh, you are right that there are some telcos in, in maybe, maybe in emerging countries or in other areas which are a little bit lagging behind. But I think that this is an opportunity because technology is, is here and it's, it's ready to be used and because of this is, um, I think that this is impacting very much the PNL of the company, whether it is uh, on the efficiency part, being more uh, reducing the costs and, and, and being more efficient in a way, or also uh, improving the revenues because you are growing and, and the, there is a real demand of these digital services. You know? Thank you. Jane, so it's an opportunity for telecos. Absolutely, and I would say that even though that uh, there are telcos that is not as far ahead as, for instance, uh, Telefonica in this in these cases, then I think if you do just look at the pure business, if you start 
back to saying how what what can you do today well it's not only about re new revenues but it's also about what is the the cost that is associated if you start the the digital uh, transformation for yourself and look at the sustainability of the network and therefore also the energy consumption you're actually able to do something that is, has a, a business impact as a telco while you then start the transformation saying okay but how can i deploy uh, applications on the on, on the edge of the network how can i help building up the uh, industrial iot and iot solution for smart cities for factories for for enterprises overall and of course this is a journey but i'm just saying that while we are all on that journey there's also a possibility of seeing bottom line in terms of financials in the meantime because we can start with some of the energy saving parts already today adam these carbon zero strategies you know are they also economically advantageous to the telcos um, as well as being morally advantageous well i think i think it it, it drives the right behavior um, I think that it's something that should uh, run through every part of network design, network deployment. Um, and, I, and I think that there's also, um, within 5G, there's also an unraveling of something which has, has tripped telcos up for the last two decades, um, which is uh, originally telecoms operators were all around connecting people. Uh, and what's snuck up on us over the last well, 20 years is that telcos are now connecting more things than people, but there have been fundamentally networks that have been designed with all the regulatory overhead and obligation overhead, um, such as 999 calling, um, voicemail, um, many things that are designed for people when actually there's a, m a massive demand to connect things. And one of the things that 5G does is it starts to separate out these platforms uh, within networks so that the efficiency and the overhead, the overheads can be diminished for running simple services just to connect things. Um, back to my earlier comments, we're, st we're still at the point where we're seeing um, an appetite to make things less bad rather than more good. Um, I, for one, I'd be wanting to understand how we can, how we can um, create mobile deployments that are completely um, powered by renewables uh, and how to, to work with uh, local and national government uh, to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely right. I'd love to see uh, more work being done on the re renewable power for, for mobile networks. Jane, you know, let's say that telcos are right to do this now uh, and we should strongly support their efforts with these strategies. It's, this is only going to work if the whole ecosystem is behind them. Um, are, are they being hampered by maybe a slow pace of change in their extended supply chains? You know, do, do we think vendors, and I, and I mean all the vendors, all the small vendors and sub vendors, etc., are, are they all as equally committed? I think the short answer is yes. But I also think that having an, an ecosystem and having collaboration across not just one part of a uh, of a network, but is network plus the the IT stack plus the application layer and understanding this. Um, let's go back to, to uh, again, one of my favorites, Edge applications. It doesn't help if the applications that is being made is not thinking about how often do I um, need to send data, how far do I need to send it away. So, so I think we still, has a, we still have a learning to do as an ecosystem, but I definitely think that we are um, we're there but, and the, the mindset is there. But we still need to work closer together because otherwise we don't understand the challenges. And then we, as Adam said, we will continue to try to, to solve a problem instead of being, you know, the positive part of it and, and actually contribute with handprints instead of footprints. So I would wish that we, that we saw a, a closer collaboration, not on the 5G network side, but the 5G plus the, what I call the IT stacks of the application layer, the management side, how can we do lifecycle management across these things? How can we actually optimize uh, the use of the applications, whether they're sitting on the edge or further in, but make the smart choices around it. And that requires a little bit more collaboration in the wider supply chain, because it is network vendors plus application vendors plus the service delivery of it. And actually also a bit of uh, education of the end customer how they do the right choices on their side and what options are out there. 
And Hemant, what about startups and uh, new entrants? Are we seeing viable innovation in this area? Are these companies receiving the necessary funding and support, whether that's from investors or from the telcos and operators? Well, I think that there is, it is being created a huge ecosystem on this. I mean, there are more and more um, startups and especially the younger generations that are pushing this are quite committed with sustainability. We are seeing a lot of opportunities and a lot of new ideas coming to the space to really move forward a technology, sustainable technology in a way, no? So um, are, they, are they having their, their enough uh, funding from companies and from investors? Well, I would say that they would, they would ask for more, <laughs> but I think that there are a lot of uh, companies, big companies, such as Telefonica or such as Vodafone and in, the, in the whole telecom industry that are um, putting a lot of effort on the open innovation side. So funding startups, working with startups to really uh, push this. Uh, we, we had in Telefonica, for example, a uh, sustainable innovation uh, call where we uh, promoted and we um, uh, wor worked with uh, companies or with startups uh, that came uh, with new ideas on sustainability, um, technology and sustainability. And, and I think that this is going uh, hand in hand uh, more and more. No? So, so I am really positive on this. And I, I'm, I'm looking at new generations, especially um, asking and, and pushing uh, consumption companies um, and, and investors doing these things uh, more and more. And Adam, are you seeing a, a good level of um, innovation from startups and maybe uh, even university spin-offs, et cetera? We're, we're seeing um, some, some great innovation in, in the connected tech space. So um, startups who are leveraging uh, connectivity, whether it's connected agronomy, uh, or, or child safety, um, or, 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 or city safety. We're seeing, we're seeing a lot of leveraging of the mobile assets. Um, I guess what we're not seeing so much, um, which we'd like to see more, is, is, is innovation uh, in, in the actual supply chain to the mobile networks. So uh, radio access network kit, some of the, some of the core kit. Um, but I would also balance that out with what we've seen over the last few years has been something exemplary um, within our space, which is some of the very large operators uh, or the very large vendors uh, of mobile equipment who are usually really only um, geared to supply an entirely new mobile network refresh. Um, we're starting to see them be able to do some very granular um, uh, work on, on trials uh, and, uh, and test beds work uh, with small supplies of kit, um, uh, lending a lot of resource, uh, a, a, lot, a lot of technical support uh, for new entrants. Uh, and, I and I think that that's something that's just, just to be encouraged. Um, as as co-chair of the Test and Trials Program, um, we're, we're seeing an awful lot of support from some of these very large vendors. Uh, and I think that's just great. And Jane, what about your perspective? Um, are you seeing a, a, a healthy amount of interest in, in sustainable technologies from the, the smaller companies and startups or feeders? I, I would say yes. I think some of the innovation parts um, exactly for saying how do we do things right is definitely coming powered out of uh, different startup environments within Europe. So um, I think we we are as um, as of now I think we can do more always, but I think we are on the right uh, path to get it um, to not not only get the right solutions into the networks, but also this next step of saying what can we then use the network for of being delivering the solutions on the other side. And, and here I just want to give a, an example. I, um, I, I learned so, um, something like 70% of all the water in the world is used by agriculture. And when we go around and say that we somehow sometimes have uh, water problems and, and which is also part of the bigger sustainability targets, how do we make sure that we have clean water and the right water in the right places? Um, well, then small things like being able to, in, optimize the agriculture for the right water usage. This is some of the things where we now see the drones are being used. And I think um, how can you combine 
the drone technology, which is also mobile, but with the with the parts we have, and and for these type of innovations, I definitely like it. I think for the pure network understanding and how do we build networks that is the best possible option for sustainability, that I think will need to come. We need to push the limits constantly, and we need to renew not only um, how we make the products, but also how how well they're doing use. And then this edge cloud thinking, where do we where do we put the data? But I'm I'm very I see that there. It, there's a lot of good support from the startup community, but probably more on the application side and then the individual pieces. Of course, there's chipset technology that is pushing the, the energy consumption as well uh, down in the right direction. But again, that is part of pushing things down to a level where we'd like to be, but the, but the positive side is, is definitely a lot of growth as well. Well, a final quick question to all of you then. Um, we talked about this, this rapid digital uh, transformation we've seen in the past year. What advice do you all have to share with the telecoms industry so that the telecoms industry can act in a sustainable manner and be a positive enabler for decarbonisation? Adam, any final thoughts from you? I think um, I would say stay curious. Um, question everything that we've done in the past and why we should or shouldn't do that in the future. And, and also just to live by the mantra focus on not just being less bad. Um, that's, that's not a means to an end. Uh, focus on being more good. Couldn't agree more. Thanks, Adam. And Hema, from you. Well, I absolutely am very positive on that. And I, and I would say that the industry has a whole impact, not only in being green or, or enable, enabling others to be greener, but also the social impact of the whole industry in terms of giving connectivity, the impact that we are having in, in all the countries that where telcos are operating in terms of GDP, in terms of employment is huge. And this needs to be uh, taken into account. And I am absolutely convinced that the, the path and the, 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 the future is uh, sustainability for, for the telcos. Thank you. And Jane, final thoughts? Yeah, I think that um, since since other topics were now covered, I think I would uh, I would my recommendation would be don't underestimate the power of the local innovation systems. Right, as a telco, you there's a there's a big opportunity to be part of these local ecosystem buildings around innovation, around the right solutions. Because what we also see is that not only due to regulatory frameworks on also on on uh, some of the energy topics, right. Um, but overall, that we are much better off if we get the local innovation uh, embedded into this. And I think that the telco has a, a huge role to play. And, and I think it's a, it's a very positive way that they can drive the local ecosystems around innovation for this, for, for sustainability overall. Well, thank you all very much indeed for participating and sharing your views and opinions with us. Now, if you're watching this on day four of our DSP Leaders World Forum, then don't forget to send us any questions you have on this subject and we'll try and answer them in our live after show programme later today. Otherwise, please take a look at all the sessions from this year's World Forum. We're making them all available for on-demand viewing throughout the week. Today is focused on 5G and sustainability, but we are covering four other important topics as part of this year's event. We've got a great lineup of speakers this year, so please do keep watching and get in touch with us and let us know your views. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.